Good morning, Akira. How are you? How have you been? Oh, good. Thanks, Matt. Good. Thanks, Matt. How are you? Good. 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 Yeah. So, so, Akira, you have a new role here at Procona that you started not too long ago uh, mm -hmm. as product owner for MongoDB. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Yes. Um, I uh, started as that tech lead, but now I'm uh, working more on the engineering side. That's correct. So you are helping to define the new cool things we're going to put in MongoDB, uh, our uh, Percona server for Mongo and our Percona uh, distribution for Mongo, correct? That's correct. Yes. yes. All right. And I asked you here if you could talk with us for a few minutes because I've noticed on some of the Slack message rooms and a few mm -hmm. other places, people are kind of confused about replication and sharding in MongoDB. And mm -hmm. I thought it would be good to just do a quick refresher course on it. So if you could just maybe give us the... 101 version of what is the difference between replication and sharding? Oh, okay. Well, replication. Replication uh, is uh, when you use uh, uh, multiple servers to do the job of one. I was saying that sounds crazy. I mean, but uh, it means when you have, instead of having one database server, you have another one that clones it, another one that clones it, and they clone it live. They're always copying each other and, and keeping up. One of them will be the primary, the others are called the secondary. Uh, the secondary is a clone in the primary. So you typically you'll have three of these and you might be thinking, well, why do we have three of them? Why make three servers do the same work? Uh, the answer is simply that, you know, if one crashes, you're, you're going to survive. The clients can switch over automatically to the new one. So replication is constant live cloning of all the rights from one database server okay. to some backups. But not, not, not backups, they're, they're live. They're live cloning nodes. That's, so that is replication. So in other words, you have a primary server mm -hmm. and the primary server will copy its data to the secondary servers. And you have two of them uh, yep. in, a, in a three node cluster, mm -hmm. if you will, in a three node replication. Yep. Correct. And if one of the nodes fails, then the other one of the other nodes will be propagated to the primary. And then Correct. the secondary will be able to continue the, the syncing up with the primary. Yes, yes. What, what was uh, until that stage running in a secondary will become the primary. Um, the say there was three, the, the two remaining nodes will go, hey, where'd the primary go? It, it, maybe it dropped off, the network was cut off, or maybe, you know, that data center went up in a fire. They'll notice the primary's gone. You know, this is a heartbeat mechanism, blah, blah, blah. But they'll notice and say, okay, let's have an election. That, there's an election process, one gets picked, and that's it, bang, it's primary. So your replica set, uh, apart from a little bit of time, always has a primary. That's, that, that's the neat thing about a replica set. It always has a primary. So do a lot of people uh, write just to the primary and then read from the secondary? Um, some people read from the secondary, but you're, you, might be, you might be looking back into time a little bit if you look at secondary because it's copying. Um, there are some people, there are some uh, large users that will do that because they're okay with slightly stale data that are fine, but mainly that's not the reason, that's not the main reason replication. Replication is for high availability, the, the ability to just fail over also, just to do ordinary maintenance without any downtime, no downtime. Your ordinary maintenance is just shut one node down, upgrade it, whatever you're doing. Uh, and it's fine because the primary role will just like magically boom, change over to one of the other nodes. And what, do, you know, so how does sharding differ from that? Oh, uh, shard, now sharding is, uh, sharding is going to split up your uh, workload between, between more and more servers. Now, sh sharding will be... Yeah, you'll be taking one table and you'll be breaking it. Oh, well, sorry, I say table just to get to get people used to it. But of course, in MongoDB, it's called a collection. We take one big collection and you split it into two along some logical line. Okay, where this field is less than this value, it's on that shard, and where it's greater than this value, it's on that shard. Um, well, that's, it's not quite as simple as that. But basically, you take that table and you split or collection, you split it between different shards. And that way, reads and writes for this part of the table can go to those servers, and reads and writes for this part, that part of the table can go to the other servers. Uh, this is, if you've hit the limit with your data that you can fit on one server, you, this is this is the way you can you can continue to grow the size of your database and continue to serve enough your client applications fast enough. Because by using more hardware, by splitting big collections between more shards. Okay, so this would be like. If you wanted a geo-distributed application, you could do that with sharding, correct? Uh, that's correct. And in that case, you'd choose the shard key, that partition rule, um, where you'd say you put the, say the country code in the first field. 
That's that's quite right. Yes. Okay, and that way you can have the different data in different locations. Now, yeah. how do they work together? So we've got the sharded data. Mm -hmm. Do we still need to replicate? Uh, yes, you do. It used to be that MongoDB would let you have a non-replicate replica style node, uh, which is called a standalone, uh, as a as a as a SHA. But for a while now, it's required replication to be on. Um, this is for data consistency rules because uh, replica sets can also increase your data consistency um, guarantees. Uh, so you will need to have a replica set, but a replica set can be just one node. You can have a sort of uh, not really replicating replica set. When you start at one, when you begin a new replica set, you can create one node and there's no secondaries copying from it. It's still ready to be a bigger replica set, um, but you can have a single node replica set. Uh, so it's possible to do that, but all the shards have to be a replica set, even if it's just a one node one. So that's an interesting question, right? So mm -hmm. why would you potentially want a single replica sharded cluster? Well, the only, the only, the only good reason is to uh, reduce the amount that you're spending on hiring servers or, or buying servers. That's the only reason. Uh, now, for some... For some uh, cases, uh, there is not a you do not have an application that's 24/7 uh, continually live, which where users expect to keep in looking at the web page and not lose, have the web page go down for maintenance or, or uh, reasons. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's, you have an application where it's okay for the application to be shut down. Maybe an analytical, you know, an an, an, uh, an analytical analytical um, program or something like that. You you're doing you you are you are collecting lots of data, but the time of the day you put the data in, you could control that. The time of the day you're doing reports, you can control that. So if you can shut down your database, yeah, you can you can save money and just only have one node per shard. That's totally so if fine. you if you only have the one replica and one yep. of the shards goes down, can you still access the ones that are still up? You can access the ones that are up, but uh, the of course there will be uh, er uh, errors if you're hit, hitting the one that's down. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I really I can't imagine a situation where that would seem okay because uh, usually things are usually an application is going to be trying to use the whole collection. Um, also, uh, before I uh, I mentioned I mentioned that the sharding rule is uh, it's not as simple as say everything above X and everything below X between these two shards. Actually, the chunks are broken up re mm, not exactly randomly but fairly fairly split over. So the chance that um, you'll have no errors at all in that situation is not very high. You're probably going to have send out 10 queries and you're probably going to lose, you know, whatever, whatever your um, fraction is down. Yeah. So if, if you were setting something up, you would say for production, you, you mm. really want a replica set, multiple yep. sets yep. to start with. Yes. And then add sharding later on. Um, Yes, you you can you can start with one replica set, and this, this is this is not bad. I mean, people think, oh, okay, our, our application may take off. We we better get rid of sharding, but uh, you, you can go a long way with one server, so long as it's, as it's a nice big server. Uh, and if you stick with a non-sharded replica set, one that's just a three nodes, a typical, um, in a without config servers and Mongo S nodes, these are extra things that are added for a cluster. Without adding those extra things, you can have a replica set. And so long as you're growing, um, it's fine. And just in case you're worried, but why do I get stuck on that? Do I have to take, take downtime to change to a cluster? You don't. MongoDB has this great upgrade process um, from replica set to cluster where you can do an upgrade live without any downtime. So it's okay to start without a cluster. You can start with just with a plain replica set. Um, that's fine. Okay. And you're so your gonna, recommendation not, not, would be rep, do a replica set, then add sharding later to avoid the complexity. Typically, what's the minimum number of servers you need to shard? Well, um uh well with with uh with a with a cluster you're going to you're going to have a uh you're going to have a, a replica set for each of the shards and the minimum number of shards is one. You always when you start a cluster you're always starting with just one shard kind of obvious. But there's also another replica set for these co uh no, MongoD nodes called config servers. They just they're also regular MongoD um, database nodes, but they just hold the config data, metadata. That's that's kind of obvious. Uh, so you'll need probably three of those as well. Yes, you should have three config servers. Uh, and then also you'll add some router router processes called Mongo S nodes. Uh, so you probably you should have two of those because again, for maintenance reasons, when you want to upgrade them, you only want to 
you shut down one, uh, upgrade it, then shut down the other and upgrade it. Um, so you can have at least two of those. You can have three config servers. So you've added at least five processes that you'll be maintaining as you. Uh, and as that's just with a single shard key, like yep. a shard. Yeah, with even a single shard, you're going to do a single you know, shard, and then you want two replicas yep. of that single shard. And if you really want to take advantage of sharding, you really would need two shards at least. Yes, yeah. The, the, so that's the, six. Yeah. So, so yeah, six. You're going to you're going to have six six um, proper proper sized um, database servers, each holding a MongoD node. That's a regular shard MongoD node, plus some small servers for the config servers. The uh, plus. Well, the MongoS nodes, uh, MongoS router nodes are only small processes. They could be anywhere. You don't need extra service for those necessarily. Um, uh, so yeah, you, you've got, but you've got, as soon as you really get going with clusters, you, you, you're going to have nine data bearing nodes. Um, that's as soon as you really get started. Whereas if you only have a replica set, you're only maintaining three, three nodes. Um, that's all, that's all. And it's, so it's easy to start with just the replica set. Then yep. with the upgrade being, you know, easy to the cluster or easier to the cluster, you can move that mm. way later on without yep. having those downsides. So is there really any downside to um, sharding too early though, other than the cost and the, the complexity? Um, uh, no, well, cost and complexity is it, but of course that, that matters to a lot of people, but no, that that's it. There is, there isn't. Um, you could also, if you wanted to lose the config servers, that when you realize that you don't need to have a cluster, that would also be possible. Um, uh, you you could do it, uh, but yeah, uh, there's no there's no major there's no major downsides. Um, in fact, maybe if all your other MongoD, MongoDB deployments are clusters, you know you're going to have a small one, but all the other ones are clusters. Okay, let, let's let's do the small one as a as a single shard cluster as well. That might make sense. It's not. It's not, it's not okay. hard and fast. You're not not really caught in any big traps here. Okay. Well, great. Thank you for kind of giving us the 101 version of replication and sharding. Um, appreciate it. Uh, it was great talking with you. And uh, we'll we'll catch up later when we have another Mongo question that comes up. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Nice nice talking to you, Matt. Catch you around.